Well, many of us, when we think about metals and mining, we think about great big holes in the bedrock or underground tunnels. But in fact, there is an important ore deposit type that is not in the bedrock, but in sediments right here at the Earth's surface. Plaza deposits form in various types of sediments due to the differences in the density of different minerals. The word plaza itself is originally Spanish, meaning river sand. But despite the origin of the word, plaza deposits can form in all kinds of sedimentary settings, not only in rivers, but also in sediments transported by wind or along coastal shorelines as a result of ocean currents. Some plaza deposits are very old and now form part of the bedrock itself, but there are many plaza deposits mined today that have formed very recently in the geological history. So there are quite a few metals and minerals that are mined from plaza deposits. Anything that has a relatively high density has the potential to form a plaza deposit. So things like the tin mineral cassiterite or diamonds, and of course, gold. Gold is probably the most famous metal when it comes to plaza deposits. For example, you've probably heard about the Klondike gold rush between 1896 and 1899. During the gold rush, an estimated 100,000 people migrated to the Yukon in northwestern Canada to dig for gold that was found in the river sediments there. It's hard work because the ground here is permanently frozen below the surface, but there is so much gold in the sediments that people built huge machines to dig it up. In the end, it wasn't enough to sustain mining operations at a large scale, but small miners still operate here. Plasters are still an important source for gold globally. Somewhere around 25 to 30 percent of gold is mined from both modern and ancient placer deposits. But placers are important source for many other metals too. In fact, much of the tin used today comes from placer deposits, mainly in Indonesia. Other metals and minerals for which placers are an important source include platinum group elements, titanium, rare earth elements, and diamonds. But let's now have a look at how placer deposits form. To understand this process, we need to first consider the properties of the metals and minerals in these deposits. To form a placer deposit, you need quite specific conditions. You need, of course, a source rock that contains metals or ore minerals. These minerals are liberated from the source rocks as it weathers and erodes, and the erosion products are transported downstream or downwind from the source. But the minerals themselves need to have some quite specific properties too. They need to be relatively dense, and we'll come back to the importance of that a bit later in this video. But in addition, they need to resist mechanical breakdown as they get bashed around during transport. So they need to be quite hard, preferably as hard or harder than quartz, which is already quite a hard mineral. On the other hand, metals such as gold are not hard, and gold is in fact a very soft metal. But gold is also very malleable, so although gold grains get easily flattened and deformed during transport, the malleability of gold means it doesn't easily break down into tiny pieces. But being able to resist breaking down mechanically is not enough. The minerals also need to be chemically stable in the surface environment. So they should not react with oxygen, for example, because such reactions will cause the mineral to break down chemically. That's why many sulfides, such as copper or lead sulfides, 
which are by their chemical nature quite reactive with oxygen, can't very easily form placer deposits. But other ore minerals, such as the tin mineral cassiterite, which is an oxide mineral, are much more stable, essentially, because they have already reacted with oxygen. And precious metals, such as gold and platinum group elements, are naturally quite stable in surface conditions, so they too have quite a good preservation potential. So the first step is to have a source rock that contains some metals uh, or minerals that have a relatively high density and a good preservation potential. But you then need a mechanism to concentrate those metals or minerals into a minopole deposit. And that's where the sedimentary processes come in, such as operate, for example, in this river here. The most common placer ore deposit type is the so-called alluvial placer, which forms in river or stream sediments. Let's see how the alluvial placer deposits form. When the source rocks for the metals erode, the minerals that make up the rock are liberated and washed downstream. Lighter minerals and smaller particles can move a lot easier than heavy minerals and large particles. So the velocity of the flow of the water determines whether or not it can move and transport the heavier particles. The higher the velocity of the flow, the heavier material it can transport. But the velocity of the flow in streams and rivers is not constant. So, for example, during dry periods, it's of course slower than during rainy periods where there's lots of water in the stream. But the velocity also changes within the rivers themselves due to river morphology. First of all, the steepness of the river bed is not the same everywhere. The steeper the river gradient is, the higher the flow velocity, so heavy particles can move more easily. In addition, especially the downstream sections of large rivers are often bendy or meandering. In such meandering rivers, the flow velocity is higher on the outside of a bend, whereas on the inside of a bend, the velocity drops. So all this means that whilst the heavy minerals can move gradually downstream when the flow velocity is high, they settle down in places where the flow velocity suddenly drops. So for example, in meandering rivers, the inside bends are ideal for depositing heavier particles as the water loses its capability to transport the heavier material. You can see this process in action in any river, so the boulders and gravel which are heavy tend to accumulate as gravel bars on the inside bends of rivers, whilst the outside bend of the river is eroded and steep as all material gets carried away. The river channel isn't constant either, so it can cut through and change its pattern, forming new localities for heavy mineral deposition. So when these processes are repeated over thousands and thousands of years, significant volumes of sediments enriched in heavy minerals can form. So large river systems are really efficient in concentrating dense minerals into ore deposits and placer deposits. But alluvial systems are not the only game in town. There are also other, perhaps surprising, sedimentary systems that also have the potential to form placer deposits. Placers can form anywhere where material gets moved around, such as on beaches and oceanic shorelines. For example, about half of all titanium mined today comes from heavy minerals mined from beach placer deposits. Beach deposits form when ocean currents and wave action concentrate the heavy minerals along shorelines. In fact, there are many places in the world where heavy minerals accumulate along beaches and shorelines 
forming potentially economic deposits. Like this map here shows gold, diamonds, tin, titanium, zirconium, and other metals and elements are perhaps surprisingly common in shoreline deposits. And then there's wind. Wind can also sort denser minerals from lighter ones, although these so-called aeolian plasses are much rarer. Aeolian plasses can be found in very dry regions where winds blow the lighter materials such as quartz sand away, leaving the denser minerals behind. Such plasses are usually quite small and seldom economic. Placer deposits of all sorts have been forming since the birth of the continents. So in addition to modern deposits, you can also find ancient deposits where they have been caught up in later mountain building processes. Both ancient placers, so-called paleoplasters, and modern placers are being mined today. For example, modern placers in Indonesia are mined for the tin mineral cassiterite. And a good example of a paleoplaster is the Witwatersrand district in South Africa, where gold is mined from an ancient, almost 3 billion years old placer, now buried deep underground. This deposit is huge, and some estimate that over 20% of gold ever produced in human history comes from this area. Well, placer deposits continue to be an important deposit type, not only for gold, but also for many metals that are essential for the industry and in the energy transition. But as with any industrial activity, it is essential that mining too follows good environmental and health and safety practices. Unfortunately, that is not the case in many places. Mining is essential for our modern society and especially now, as we need to accelerate building low-carbon energy infrastructure. Many companies and governments take environmental and societal challenges of mining very seriously, but there are countries and companies whose track record in this is not exactly impressive. Mining modern places in particular can be problematic as these deposits are at Earth's surface and typically cover large areas, so mining them can leave huge scars in the landscape and affect entire communities. For example, much of the tin mining in Indonesia is very problematic because the environmental and safety regulations there lag far behind those in many other countries. Responsible mining can be done and is being done all over the world. But as our need for metals and minerals keeps growing, we need to make sure and demand that our resources are produced responsibly. We have all the knowledge and technology we need to do just that.